Good morning, everybody. Um, today's topic is about planning for 2021. Or 20, oh, wow, 2021 is almost over, 2022. So, um, you know, it's really important to come up with a goal and then put together all the pieces required to knock that out. And my goal next year is 50,000 items listed. So I need to list 1,000 per week in order to achieve that. Isaiah, do you want to start us off? We're planning for next year. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question about, I've been thinking about this all morning, um, about like something that I want to add to my business. So I um, was ordering from Domino's yesterday. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my order, they like did a pop-up that said like, hey, do you want to add a, a lava cake? And do you want to add breadsticks to your order? And then it was like only an extra dollar for cheese sticks, basically. And it's made me start thinking like I want it to I want to add something like that to my business. Like, I guess in the case of shoes, it'd be like socks or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, that way I can encourage people to buy more than just one item when they go to my store and to ship a pair of socks in the box where the shoes are in would be relatively easy. Like I can just throw the socks in there. The weight is not going to increase by much. And then I'm probably still kicking in the same priority rail. A priority mail amount. So um, how would you go about doing something like that? Um, like purchasing stocks at scale and being able to make a potentially minuscule profit from them? Because it wouldn't want to be something, I wouldn't want to like sell them and then like break even on them. It doesn't really make sense. I might as well just continue doing what I'm doing. But if I can make a little bit of money, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. I, that's a great question. And um, it reminds me of what Bill asked a few months ago, which was like, what would we talk about in an advanced eBay call? That's what we would talk about. So as an example, the, do you want fries with that? That's what we're selling, right? So yeah. a couple of things you could do. One, you could have an add on that would work for any single, I mean, that would be similar to what you sell like laces. Um, it would be, shoe cleaner, something related to shoes makes sense. Like if you asked every single customer next year, right after they bought it, Hey, um, normally it costs $12 for shoe cleaner, but eight of that is shipping. Do you want an extra, you want shoe cleaner for five bucks? I'll throw it in the package. If you sent that to every <laughs> single, every single person, somebody would bite. There's no way like out of the entire year, no one would buy that. But, um, I think that's really You could important. add replacement laces to someone's order for like two bucks. Yeah. Like it, it, who wouldn't say yes to that? Like, oh yeah, you get a pair of replacement um, laces for $2. Like it's, it's easy. It's easy. It's so, easy. So like. But you have to factor in the time to send that message. Yeah. That's the so, thing. I, um, I'd have to figure out how to automate that. Preferably. When you do the, um, do you want fries with that? It only takes a tiny, tiny more effort. But sending a customer and a message after that, that takes a lot of effort. You would need mm -hmm. a, there are programs that are out that are out there that will automatically send your customer a message. The problem with that is that is a um, cookie cutter message. And if you really wanted it to convert, you would do a customized message. But again, that's like running a thank you card. It, it takes a long time. I don't know if you can justify the extra time. You know, I had somebody wrap my return in tissue paper. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, really? Okay, well, thank you. The nice presentation. But it took them extra time to do that. So that's something to. Oh, also, I did have somebody return a pair of jeans in a 20 by 20 by 20 box. That happened. <laughs> So now I don't, I don't know what, if I'm going to be charged the, the dimensions on that. I don't know. That, that literally happened. Somebody, the return envelope says flat rate envelope on it. And it came in a 20 by 20 by 20 bucks. So I'll have to see, do I get charged the full, the full return or just the flat rate envelope? That's, that's crazy. But anyway, to answer your question, um, like to answer your overarching question, that's one of the things I'm working on. Uh, for the near future but next year i want to have four thousand listings i'm currently at like just under 1500 if i'm not mistaken um the reason why i want four thousand you want four thousand four thousand active you mean yes four thousand active listings okay um 
that way because I want to do around uh, I, my goal is to hit 500 my like lower tier goal is around 200k in sales next year um but like I, I, I want to at least I want to show a hundred thousand dollars in income next year that is my goal primarily and the reason for that is so that I can have a because this year I'm probably going to show really close to zero and next year if I show a hundred thousand then it's going to average me out to around 50K, which makes me a little bit more eligible to buy real estate in my area. But if I show $0 next year, then I can't buy real estate. So that's that's what I'm aiming towards next year. It would be better if you could to show some income, just from my experience, with my limited experience with real estate. Um, it's, it's better to show some income than no income. But yeah, I, I, they do do that. They do do half of if you have solid income for one year and then the next year you have the same job, sometimes they will divide that by half and give you half the income. But that's not, not always the case. Depends on the lender. But that's, yeah. that's, a, good, that's a good thought. I like it. So you want to maintain 4,000 listings all year? I want to get to 4,000. And then once I get there, I want to go above it, of course. Okay. Um, so. I would like to, there's a lot of people who've been sending me these types of goals and I think it's really hard to do that. Yeah. Like, um, it's really hard to say, I want to get to 4,000. And when I get there, I want to get to 5,000 and I want to get there. I want to get to 7,000. That's really, that's a multi-tier goal. You're giving yourself multiple opportunities to fail. So event, I mean, I think what makes you a hundred thousand dollars profit, how many active, you know? I don't know how many, it'd probably be around, well, probably around like 27, 2,800 items, roughly. Wait, how many? Because like the reason why I say that is because I'm at like 1,300, I'm sorry, yeah, I've been, I'm, I'm, we lost you, Isaiah. Uh, let's see. All right. We'll come back to Isaiah. Cheryl. Cause I've been so much of it. So if I had around. We'll come back to Isaiah. Cheryl. Um, well. Um... We are planning for 2022. Just wanted to hear what your, what your. So my goal for next year um, is to get to 50 a day and at the, by the end of the year to provide both of my daughters with at least $15,000 down payment for a house. 15,000 15, for a down payment for the house? Um, I, wanna, I want my, both of my daughters to be able to buy their own house next okay. year and mm -hmm. I want to provide the down payment for them. Got you. Do you know how, how much is that? Well, um, uh, we'll go over more of it in the accounting call tomorrow, but, um, gotcha. 15 grand a piece is what my goal is to give the, to give to each of them. That's great. Yeah. That's like a, the best mama gift ever because you, um, that's the hardest part of starting, starting is getting the first piece of real estate. So $30,000 profit extra. Um, how are, how are you looking at that? Like how many items is that? Well, um, I, like I said, I want to get to 50,000 a day. Um, so 30,000 profit, I mean, extra would be 3000 items. Okay. Gotcha. 3000 items times $10. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what I'm averaging. Okay. This is awesome because let's just make it a little bit simpler because maybe some items don't sell for ten dollars profit and maybe some items don't sell so let's do three thousand six hundred and fifty items okay so that's ten a day so that's actually a really good um that's actually a really good um goal because that's only ten a day so ten a day extra would allow both of your daughters to have a down payment for a house which is great because that's a um tangible goal uh, and I want to bring up something that um, Eyeball Industries is saying in the chat. Sometimes when the more you list, your sell-through rate goes down. I am really concerned with that. So right now, my because I've been building my store again from scratch, um, I hit 3,800 listings yesterday. 
And this weekend, I'll go over 4,000. But I'm still averaging over 40 sales a day. So my salty rate's over 1% still. So as I'm growing slowly right now, I'm maintaining the sell through rate. So for example, if you wanted 10 sales a day with a 1% sell through, you would have a 1000 item store. So um, let me think here, 1000. 50 items a day is, is a really ambitious goal. I know you can do it, especially since your system is so similar to text and mine, but um, you just wanna make sure as you're growing that the sell through rate remains the same. Yeah, really important because it's easy for you to list. Okay, let's say you have a thousand items in your store and you're selling 10 a day. If you get the 2000 items and you're still selling 10 a day, you need to go back and fix your store. I always want everyone to remember that because it's harder to fix your store the bigger it gets. So make sure that your store is good where it's at and then continue. Okay, so you wanna do 50, are you gonna start, you wanna average 50 a day all year? Um, I want to get to 50 by the, by summer. Okay. But based on what you just said, it put it in perspective. My goal for myself, the money that I would like to have is 15 a day. Mm -hmm. So getting to 25 a day would yep. be able to get me to my ultimate goal of, yep. or to that goal, including um, the extra money that I would like to have. So that's I mean, great. getting to 50 would just be gravy. That's right. 50 would actually be twice your goal. So yeah. this is important because a lot of people have goals that like my goal is totally unnecessary. So if you have an unnecessary goal and like more money than you need, then you really need to figure out the systems to keep you motivated because otherwise it'll, you'll just, you'll deflate because 25 equals your income that you want plus your daughter's down payments 50 just means that i mean that is nice that's like another um it's a lot it's like a hundred thousand dollars profit extra or more a year um so that brings up a couple of questions tim's asking how do you plan to source 50 items a day so that is a really important question so that's something that I'm, um, which is why I'm not trying to get there before summer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the next six months to really work on uh, the sourcing aspect because it's the weakest link in my processes, Got especially it. to scale. Um, okay. So yeah, planning is important. And then also, I think that I'm going to make up a new rule, the 2x rule. If you want to be able to list 50 a day, you need the capacity to list 100 a day. So, so if you set up your systems to do 50 a day next, next year, Cheryl, which I think you're pretty much set up to do that, then 25 a day should be easy. You can't have your red line be what you can do. Um, so someone in the chat asked about the accounting call. Cheryl is our resident accountant. So she does a call every the, the um, first and third Thursday of every single month. So if you're in our group, um, you can join and Cheryl also has an a, um, accounting sheet that she goes over for basic bookkeeping and accounting. And she can actually answer your question, unlike me, I can give you some, some advice that you can use for educational purposes, but she can give you advice that you can use to file your taxes. So very different. Um, so yeah, everyone join the group, buy Cheryl's bookkeeping thing, show up twice a month and ask her questions as you figure this out. Uh, and JJ says Cheryl sheet is amazing. So nice plug. So I like this for next year. Um, everyone plan for twice as much and plan on how to source. And I think it's the same thing. You need to have more plugs for stuff than you think, because people always fall through, at least for me. It's hard to maintain a supplier all year long. Demetrius, do you have a question? Or do you want to give us some feedback? Uh, yeah, well, it was more so just a question because um, I was thinking about that thing that you said the other day about nobody really asked you about like, this is my process, this is my goal. 
you know, how can I be more productive? Mm -hmm. So I kind of have that same question. So whenever I bring in stuff, so my goal is to fully automate everything. I'm assuming that's Mm -hmm. pretty much everybody's goal. But um, what I want to do right now, I'm doing 15 listings a day. And uh, I want to hit at least 2,100 a week gross. And for this year, I kind of want to like put everything just on cruise control and make sure for the next 365 days, I do 15 and, you know, nothing more, nothing less, but make sure that that 15 gets hit every day. And this is my process. So I bring stuff in and it gets put on this little shelf over here. And then as soon as I, um, as soon as I uh, make listings for it, I put it over here to be pictured. And that's my photo station. Okay. And then after they get photoed, they get put right here on this desk so the pictures can put, get put with them. And then um, after they, you know, uh, get pictures and stuff and get put in the draft bank, they get put, you know, on these shelves back here. Um, whenever they sell, I just put everything on this little shipping shelf and, you know, start shipping them that way. But right now, uh, I'm just recording everything, like how long it takes me to like take pictures of, because right now I'm just selling toys, video games, and like plushies mainly. So right now I'm just recording like um, how long it takes me to uh, take pictures of like each figure or each act, uh, or each game, and like how long it takes me to ship each game. But um, my main question is, is there anything I can be doing more or be recording more? Okay, so the way that you're looking at it is is awesome because you're like, okay, this is how I do the photos. This is my process. This is how I draft. So now that you know your process, once it's all written down, I, I recommend you write it down. Then you can start thinking about which part takes the longest. That's the part that you start tackling first. Because if you... Um, and spotlight. When you are making improvements, you don't want to do something like, I need better lights for my photo kit and then spend two days on that because you already were taking photos with your photo kit before. It didn't, that slowed you way down. But if your prep takes a really long time, that takes you an hour a day, and you cut that down to half an hour a day, you just saved 30 minutes. Yesterday, Isaiah was watching me sort for the next day. So we have... Right now, I have two listers. They both do one, 105 a day. So I need to set up 210 pieces for them before they get to work. One thing I, I noticed I learned from tech this year is I try to do things all the way to completion once I start. So I'm not going to do a little bit of prep here, then go do something else. And then a little bit of prep there. I'm going to do all 210 prep right there and then go do something else. So that process has saved me a ton of time because what people are doing, tons of people do this. They split up one day of work into five days. That's what Isaiah is doing. He has like 80% of his day is socializing. He stretches out his work all day instead of just doing it in one small window. That's the big, that's, that's the difference. Like if you call your grandma every day, do it after you're done. You can, you can talk to your grandma for seven hours a day after you're done doing your work. So condensing all of that into one thing is huge. So with you, Demetrius, talking about your systems, what you could do is just each step of the way, knock out all of it, all the photos, then put it onto that shelf, all the listing, or all, in your case, all the draft banking. And um, I'll, I'll give you another example. So yesterday was the third day that my drafter started so um last week on thursday was her first day she did 30 listings in four hours then um friday she did 34 listings in four hours um and then let's see yes or monday she had her last final and then yesterday she came in for four hours and i think she did 42 or something so she went from 30 to 34 to 42 the first three days of work, and she did not um, do anything different. She just got better. So I think everyone needs to do that. Like, you don't, it's not like we made any changes. She just got more used to it. So um, also, I now realize that maybe 
I should have a little course in the group of how to set up your computer. And people should just have the exact same setup as me because you can list in under two minutes with the same setup that I have as long as you know your category. If you don't know your category, it takes three minutes to list an item. Like unless you be unless you deliberate for a really long time on what to price the item at, but I think you should not do that. I don't recommend Is it four hours after doing the 105 sets of photos? No, no, four hours. I'm sorry. Yeah, four hours for 105 sets of photos and four hours for um, listing 105. But yesterday she only worked the first three days because she's still in school. She's she's she finished school um, Monday, her final. So now she's going to go full time starting maybe not today, but either this week or next week, she's going to switch to full time right now. She's just doing four hours. I'm sorry. I think I asked my question improperly. So like during those four hours, did she do the 42 sets of photos or did she do the, I'm going to say the 42 sets of listings or did she do 105 photos and then 42 listings? That's a good question. So she did 42 sets of photos, 42 listings yesterday. All in a row, all the way through, all the way done. Um, so this is the lady you did the video with 10 hours ago that you posted? No, that lady I was hiring. Well, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do with her because what I think it was Kim recommended. So I went through 168 interview, not in, well, interviews and then screening process. And of those 168, four people were really good, including that girl. And so Kim said, hire all of them because they don't, they, maybe they don't work out. So yesterday I had a no call, no show, which is amazing. I don't know how that, how can that possibly happen? I've never no called, no showed ever in my life. So mm -hmm. that guy's gone. So um, he was, I don't know what happened to him because he, he followed, he has all the things that you would think would be reliable. Like he needs the work. So he, he needs money. He's good at the job. Still didn't call me, didn't show up yesterday. So he's gone. I'm glad I hired all of them Salesman. because maybe I'll be stuck with one. Um, and then let anyway. me ask you one other question. Yeah. How close is your system on your computer to tax system on his computer? Um, pretty, okay. Pretty close. Similar, but okay. I'll tell you the differences. He uses the plus button and a series of tab and down to select the photos. That is faster than the way that I do it, which is dragging the photos in because I sell mainly pants. I like to be able to, um, grow the screen so that I expand the photo so I can see the inseam and the waist measurement. That's, that's the main reason because the scroll down button thing that he does is actually not that difficult as long as you spend an hour learning it. So that is a little bit different. I do templates because there's probably eight item specifics per woman's item. So I write the title and it pre-populates the item specifics below. And he just sells similar off of another item and adjusts maybe three to six item specifics on the way down. So his process is probably, I would say 40, 40 seconds faster per listing, which is really ridiculous. Like definitely sub one minute every single listing, the way that he does it. Mine is like 130, like 90 seconds. And the video that I posted in, the Facebook group is a minute 10. And um, I think, so Brian's asking, does everyone use a Mac? I think it's the same for um, PC. You have, um, I have two windows side by side. And I thought that that's really obvious, right? Because you, you click the corner to resize the window. That's not obvious. I need to like make a tutorial on how to resize windows. So I have two windows side by side. He just uses one window full screen. and I think full screen is actually faster than half screen, but if you do half screen, all of the item specifics are in one row. So you can just, it's easier to make sure they're all correct in a skinny row, but takes longer because there's long, there's more scrolling. So if you um, have the screen all the way full, it only takes like three scrolls to go all the way through the listing. And you could have, like Ed was saying, a vertical screen, and you could have the whole eBay listing without any scrolling, but you would need a really big monitor to um, 
to be able to see it with your eyes and have it be comfortable for long, long periods of listing. Um, but you don't need a Mac. I don't think it actually makes a difference. It's the same. Yep. Um, oh, Kim never said hire them all. Well, I did that. So I took somebody's advice in hiring all of them. I think that was a good idea because um, some of them won't work out. And on Monday, I have to, um, I'm going to redo that. I'm going to make a second photo station and I'm going to go through all the different pieces. Um, it's actually really hard. I didn't realize that either. The photo booth that I have is probably 10 different things. And text photo system is just two things, just the carpet and the lights. So also... It pains me to say this, but I may have to do his system um, for plus size clothing. And just in time flipping in the chat is saying he does jazzer size before listing. Listing plus size floor uh, clothing on the ground will be 100% a crazy workout. It's, it's going to, that's going to be hard to do it. So I'm thinking that because plus size clothing sells so much faster, maybe I can pay the worker a little bit more to do plus size clothing because it is so hard. Honestly, it's not easy. Um, let's see. Yeah, Nelson. I have a question about that because I tried to switch to your, um, you know, slanted board and uh, hanging. Yeah. But I was having an issue where it was a uh, text way really hurts my back too, because I'm using a phone. I need to switch to elf. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, with your way, I always got slowed down with getting the sleeves to stick. Maybe I'm not slanted enough on the gradient or to get the uh, measurements I wanted. Cause I can't do just put down the whole ruler, you know? So I use a, this is my process for shirts, put it in a hanger, hang it on the hook in the middle. Um, the reason why I do that is so I can flip the shirt and it's, if I, if, um, okay, let me just go over it, Put the, um, go from the bottom, put the yeah. hanger in the shirt from the bottom, hang it up. I pin the sleeve to the chest with a pin. Yeah. And that's why when I have a canvas, I can poke through it. So do you so, use a T pin or a safety pin? I use, uh, the pin with the ball on top. What are those called? Those are the thumb thumbtacks. Thumbtack. These are thumbtack. T pin. T pin. T pins are the ones you use in, in like the catering departments to make those weird vital. It's like a T. It's got a little T. I think it's a straight pin, Chris. I think he's using the ball of thumbtacks. Oh, with the <laughs> ball on top? Yeah, that's a straight pin. Okay. I use a okay. straight pin to pin the sleeve. I'm sorry, the cuff to the center of the sleeve. The cuff is a half an inch from the buttons. So when I take a picture of the profile picture, it's the cuff, the button, the collar. And usually in that picture, right. you can see what kind of collar button is underneath it for the second yeah. photo. Then take the pin out, grab the bottom of the, the, the shirt, flip it like that. And then the, the shirt's perfectly flat for the next one. That's, that's how I do it. Yeah. I and mean, you need to, you need to have a, one of the hangers that spins. And I saw that you have one that can do shirts and bottoms. Yeah, and I just, is, when you go to measure two things, when you go to measure, how do you keep the measurement up? Do you just hold the, the ruler? Yeah. Okay. So I hold the ruler with my left hand mm. and take a picture with my right hand. So I go um, pit to pit and then I'm tall. So I have to kind of squat to take the, the, um, yeah, the picture and the one the color, can be adjusted though as needed, right? For the worker, it can be adjusted. One worker is five, two. She does not have to crouch at all. Yeah. The other one that just started, she's five eight. She kind of needs to lean a little bit, but she said it's okay. She doesn't want me to change the setup between the five two girl and the five eight girl. Yeah. She like she likes it, but she does have to, to lean a little bit to do the bottom picture. So you don't think it's necessary to show the measurement from the from the whole shirt, just that part. I where I think it, it's better to take a picture of the whole shirt first and then the um, close up also adds one more picture. Yeah. But um, I don't have the right setup for that. Yeah, I was running into that issue. The other thing is, on the I had a huge 5X a golf polo and the short sleeves, that was an issue. You pin those also? 
Yeah. I pin no everything problem. that looks funny. Okay, that answered my questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thrift Up is asking about business loans. So technically, if you borrow money at, let's say, 10%, and you earn more than 10% on the money, you could borrow money. The problem is, if you don't immediately deploy that money into um, something that earns you money, like if you were to get the money from a loan and buy a photo kit, that's terrible because the photo kit is not necessarily going to make you more money. But if you bought inventory with it, you bought, you took a $10,000 business loan, you bought inventory that was worth $20,000 profit at the end of it. You sold it in less than a year, right? And you paid $1,000 interest on that $10,000 loan then you made $9,000. That's how you would effectively use a business loan. But a lot of people don't do that. They use it to pay for a vacation, pay down debt, and then they're screwed because now they're paying interest on that and they didn't use it to grow their business and they're in trouble. So I, I don't necessarily say avoid business loans, but just be careful because that's not your money, somebody else's money. So just be careful. Um, and yeah, if you want to get really, really rich, you have to use other people's money. I'm talking like, that's the, you, the usual way people get rich is they use other people's money. That's what you're doing when you, you buy real estate. You're leveraging the bank's money. So eventually, yes, you have to use other people's money. But um, just be careful because it's, it's easy to go the wrong way and get trapped in loans. Chris, I have a question for you about that. Yeah. Like, um, I, I gave that a shot and that was maybe missed five out of seven listening days, like back in October or something like that. Yeah. And, and my question for you is my, my philosophy on this has been at least recently, if you're going to get a loan, you probably shouldn't get one that's outside of your weight class in the sense of like, let's say if you're used to spending a thousand dollars a week on inventory and you go get a loan for $15,000, it might not be that great for you just because you wouldn't know how to deploy that capital effectively. Cause I try to try to get like a $9,000 loan that I had to pay back in a, at the end of Q4. Yeah. And like, I thought that I knew what I'd spend the money on. And when I wrote up a spreadsheet, it was like, okay, this makes sense. This should cash flow. But now that I'm, when I actually did it, it, it didn't work out nearly how I expected to, because it was way outside of my buying limits and it was inventory that I don't normally purchase. And, so, then, the, and then the interest starts to build up. You should, I think, your business has credit also. And if you don't build that credit, you're not going to get favorable terms regardless. There's no such thing as free money. So you're going to get a bad interest rate as a new corp. So you need to build your credit. And if you're not, if you don't have the sales and the sell through, then why even do it? I suggest people do 500 to thousand dollars on a credit card. And if they can't sell that in one month and pay it off, then you shouldn't be getting a loan anyways. You, you don't, you definitely don't need any money to start this. Like the, when I did the Resar Nirvana project, I started with literally nothing. So you could start with stuff around the house. 50 bucks, you don't need 500. $50, you could start a resale business because you need to be able to go to the thrift store and thrift and flea market and buy like 10 items. That's all, that's all you need in the beginning. And if you buy those 10 items and go home and list all 10 and none sell, you need to take a step back before you, before you don't now go borrow money and then buy 100 items that don't sell. You need to figure, yep. out, figure out the sell through along the way. I would say- so in the Go ahead. I would say in the chat, someone mentioned that like um, it, it's like unless it was utilized to buy a shoe store for you, like buy out a shoe store and then, you know, get it to you and then you get everything listed. That's exactly what I was going to get the loan for, to buy out an Adidas store. And the problem with that was the inventory that I thought was amazing, that I thought was going to sell super, super quickly. I've sold two of those pairs of shoes so far. And I only bought 11 because I decided not to do this. But it, it's just, I don't know, it, it, can, it can really, really backfire if that stuff doesn't sell when you expect it to sell, if the market drops, if anything of that nature happens. And so if it's outside of your weight class and you don't have the ability to pay back that money, if everything goes wrong, I definitely wouldn't advise it. That, that's, that's actually not, that's, an, that's, that's, an, that's another good point. If you take a $9,000 loan and you have $9,000 in your savings, and in case you can't sell the inventory, you can pay off the loan and don't pay any interest. That's a, that's a better way to do it. Because right now, um, from, from being in reselling for since 2017, my, my credit card limit, so this is what um, Nelson is talking about for um, building up your business credit. 
Um, I have business credit and I also have personal credit. My business credit is pretty good now because the business has a lot of revenue. Once you start getting a lot of revenue and the bank sees your bank account, they will offer you credit even if you don't ask for it. So it, you don't have to seek loans. When you start doing well, people will ask, will give you their money because they don't know what to do with it. If, if, you, if you run a good ship and people know, like this happened to um, Bill earlier, somebody, his friend was like, can I invest $50,000? in your business. And he said, should I take the money from my friend? Only if you know how you're paying your friend back. Like, okay, great. You, you invest $50,000. We open a second location. The revenue doubles. We pay you back over two years. I'll pay you back 60,000 on your 50,000 investment. This is how you get paid back. If you don't have that, do not borrow money from your friend unless you don't want to be friends with them anymore. Can I, can I share something with the group just so they don't make my mistake? Sure. Um, capital for inventory is not a problem that you need to solve it's a problem you're going to create because when i left my job and became full-time i got a huge payout because i had all full vacation and having that much capital to purchase inventory has been a detriment so if you think you need a loan to buy more inventory but you haven't focused on if you're moving it fast enough then you shouldn't do it trust me um the system should be in place where you're moving enough product because if you pick up too much then you're ever going to move, you're going to pay too much in interest eventually. So my business credit is under my business name. And I I don't know if it was Jeff that told me, but um, Jeff has a good relationship with Uline. So do I. And I have the net 90 or is it net 30? I, I think it's net 30. I have net 30 terms with, with Uline. I think anybody can get that. So you can start building business credit with Uline by ordering stuff and paying it off in 30 days. They will report. I need those boxes so I can just uh, put in your tax ID. I think you buy can, those, can I, you buy those boxes I'm, from them. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Um, do net thirty as long as you enter in your comp your corporate information. Oh, Jeff says you don't need anything. You can do net thirty with nothing. Chris, they gave me net thirty terms without any info. I just. Click net 30 and it billed me. Bill? Hi. Um, I have experience with this particular topic. And uh, I did the PayPal loans in the beginning when they were available. I also did uh, a loan with and for a friend. And uh, it was a particular case. I didn't, when I started the business, I didn't have, need any money to, uh, you know, I didn't need to borrow any money or anything. And I started like you did, where I started selling things from around the house. And I would say that uh, unless you're an extremely good money manager, don't get outside capital, either private or, you know, from from a uh, accredited institution, because you could be in a bind in a hurry if you don't know what the hell you're doing. Hundred percent. I mean, that's that's why they give you money is because they want yeah. you to um, that's right. screw up. No, um, in my case with uh, my friend who's a physician who, when he found out I had an eBay business and a Amazon business wanted to invest, I just did a private deal with him, 1% a month interest only. And then I paid back the balance whenever I felt like paying back the balance. Mm. So that was good for him in his situation. It was good for my business and my situation, yep. but just, uh, it's not necessary. And uh, I think that was the advice that you actually gave me when we talked about it. That you don't really need to do it. And, and I, I think that's the case. You don't really need to. I really like that advice for Cheryl because um, that's usually the, the mama loan. The mama loan is mama, give me the down payment for the house. And then later when I have more money, I'll pay you back, but not at a specific time. But if you charge your daughter 1% interest, that's fair. And it also would give your, um, give them an incentive to work harder because otherwise it's just like a free house. That's right. That's right. Um, I love that. So I don't recommend loans because you usually don't need them. So here's an example. In 2017, I started this company. I think I had from 2014 to 2017, I, I tried to make a whole bunch of businesses work and they all sucked. So it met, and, I, and I tried to finance them, some of them on some credit cards. So at the time, I think in 2017, I had maybe a 
$5,000 credit limit, not much, because uh, I never really use credit cards. So 5,000 credit limit in 2017. Now my credit limit is like $400,000 on my credit cards because I did all of the credit hacks that you, you can look at on, um, on Reddit for waiting a certain period of time before you request. I did credit, or what is it called? Credit card churning. I did the um, cycling where you um, spend money on a credit card and then pay it off early and then spend max it out again and then pay it off early. Some banks like Synchrony Bank, if you do that, they'll cancel your credit card. Other banks like Capital One, I mean, your mileage may vary, but Capital One, after I did that, my loan, my credit limit went from like 7,200 was my first limit. And now that credit card has a $200,000 limit. Just if the more you spend, the more they trust you. And then it continues. But also I've never made a late payment since I started that. So I pay off the balance in full every month and they can see that on their end. They can, if you do that, you can get a credit limit without dinging your credit. I mean, sorry, a credit increase without dinging your credit. You can just call and ask. Also, if you have, if you have debt, you can call and ask them to reduce your interest rate. And usually they will. If you've made five or six or 10 payments in a row on your credit card, you can call them and say, you know what? I want to pay this down sooner. Can you guys help me with a lower interest rate? And they will help you because they, 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 the credit card interest rate is just made up. Yeah. It, it's Chris, literally just made up. Go ahead. The, uh, you brought up a really important point, I think, for especially for new people trying to grow their business. The lure of OPM, other people's money, is yeah. really sexy on the surface. Oh, so sexy. But what, but what yeah. you did with your second store where you said, look, I'm going to take an item and sell it and hustle to get the money is, is much more effective to be able to get a foundation to help us grow our business. Yeah. Because you learn every, when you take the loan from someone else, you don't learn anything. You just learn you that you've got more money in your bank account. That's right. But when you hustle to grow it, then you learn everything you need to know about how to build the business. But, and even, even on top of that, once you've hustled for a while, so now the, the money that's in your store, that money will start working for you. And now that's you right. don't, you don't need to hustle as hard. That's right. You don't, and it, it, your hustle changes, your hustle changes from figure out what's profitable to how to manage your, your bankroll. And it's better if you start that's at right. zero because see here, silver Bushman in the chat was saying he had a 23% credit card interest rate and he called in and they lowered it to 19.4 that's ex everyone should do that try if you're if you have debt no problem just knock out the the minimum payment first so you don't get any negative thing then pay extra and if you're doing a good job you can ask they'll lower your rate it, it's it's um they they want to help you if you have any credit card or bank fees you can call and ask to remove be polite and they, they should remove it for you so i mean it's um it's a bad cycle to borrow money when you don't have to. So, Chris, you have a zero balance on your credit cards? So like, All there is no zero. balance on them? No. no. Okay, and so you spend money on that card and you pay it off in the same week. So you're never, ever making the minimum payments. They're I, always... I, I don't... No, they're always payment in full. But I... um, The only reason why I paid them off weekly before... It was not even weekly. It was like daily because I was maxing it out so often. But now I don't have to do that because the credit cards are so... The limit is so high, I don't have to pay it off immediately, but the, um, I don't have to pay it off immediately, but I still do because it's scary. It's so literally your scary. Credit, so I, does your credit take a hit for having that balance? Um, even yeah. if you've already like paid it in, like you pay with, like, I'm trying, it's hard yeah, for me to it, explain this. So no, let's no, say I, if I like, I can, ex I can explain says, it. I need to, you know what I'm talking about? I can explain it. Yeah. Okay. So you, let's say you have a, a $10,000 credit card limit and then you, um, you charge 10,000 then the credit card statement comes in it shows a balance of 10,000 and then you pay off all 10,000 before the next cycle. You don't pay any interest. It's an interest-free loan for 30 days if you decide to do your credit card. But once that 30 day interest rate is over, they start charging you ridiculous 20% interest rate on that. Right? So um, it does hurt your credit if you let it get to the statement because it affects your credit utilization, which is a, one of the biggest things on your credit report. So if you have 10,000 available credit and you're using all 10,000, you're telling people that you are maxed out. 
you will not be able to borrow any additional money and it doesn't look good on you. you well, so I pay it off before the statement hits. So when the statement comes in, they all say zero. And uh, let's see. Mariah wants to get the same card as me. It's the Spark Plus card, but I recommend any Capital One Spark card. I just added it to my blog. It's at the very bottom of the first um, I'll put it in the chat. But Chris, whenever you um, pay it off at zero, don't the credit card companies think that you're not like spending any money? No, they know. Because they, 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 they know the, the maximum balance that you have had on the credit card. So what I want is eventually I want to ask the credit card company to raise my limit without impacting my credit score. Nelson was talking about you can, you can always ask for a credit limit and they'd run your credit, but I don't want that. I want them to give me a credit increase without running my credit. And you have to have a history of paying on time to do that. Now that's, and then sometimes they will raise your limit without even asking. That's the most frustrating part because when I started this business, I was like, damn, I don't have enough money to do this. I don't, I can't scale fast enough. And they, when you're at that stage, everyone is trying to give you money or a loan because they can, ravage you on 20% interest, but you just have to be patient. You don't need, um, you don't need outside money. You don't need OPM in the beginning. You only honestly under a million dollars a year, you don't need OPM. I, I don't think you, I mean, if you're running a massive business, 20 employees, that's, I, I say 20 as in massive, but we're technically micro businesses. I think until we have either 15 or 30 employees, I can't remember. You're still not even a small business yet. So in, when you're a micro business under, let me just look this up because micro business. Even, even in California, I think there's a, there was a different minimum wage at some point if you had less than 50 employees when they went yep. up to 15. Yeah. So there's under 10 people is considered a micro business. You do not need any loans. I'll just, I'll just take that opinion. If you're under 10 people, you don't need any loans to run your business over 10, maybe because like the payroll is so ridiculous when you have over 10 employees that maybe you need a line of credit just in case things are really bad. You want to make sure you can pay your workers so they can come to work on Monday um, if it's really bad. But if you're by yourself, you can just stay up an extra two hours and grind out more listings if your sales are slow and fix it. Um, I recently, um, I recently, um, took out a lot well, I used my credit card at 2,900 they increased my limit to but I've, I've been paying it off sort of regularly but I had an opportunity somebody was selling their eBay store and um, I didn't quite have the capital for it so I decided to use my credit card but I didn't want to miss the opportunity because I got 2,000 units for two grand it was yep. pretty much a bargain so I just yep. used it and as soon as the stuff's listed I'll I'll clear it off you know so Tom, thank you for bringing that up because this is what happens. If, if, if you were to say, if Cheryl calls me and says, Chris, I want to borrow $10,000. I'm going to ask essentially two questions. Why? Right? What's it for? Then when am I getting paid back? So my friend Prince borrowed $75,000 from PayPal with the PayPal credit, uh, PayPal working capital loan, 75K. His interest rate was $16,000. That's ridiculous, right? He paid off the loan in one week. Because, and so think about that. That's like thousands of percent interest because he paid $16,000 in interest for a week. But he already knew what he was spending that $75,000 on before he took the loan and he didn't have $75,000. And there's not a bank that's going to give you that money in one day. So he took the loan. They, they, he withdrew it into his bank account either the same day or the next day. So one or two days later, he got the money. He purchased that gigantic lot that he was trying to get, flipped it to another reseller because he didn't have enough money to flip it. Like he didn't have the money to sell it himself. He needed to flip it right away. Took that big lot, sold it to another reseller for like 110000 or something, paid off the 16000 in interest and was okay. But now he's in a better position. He doesn't have to do that. He can use his own money and make all the money on the back end. So a temporary short-term loan, like a credit card, is, is, is still really dangerous, though, because you might not be able to flip. So I just, if there's, 
my recommendation definitely is you don't need money to you don't need OPM. And if you're gonna take OPM from a friend, that's really scary. Really scary. Unless unless they're okay with just giving it to you. Go ahead. I think it goes back to the theme that people I think need to understand that capital is not value. The systems and the business, the physical business where you can move and process the items and your systems are the value. Capital doesn't always equal value. That's a good so point. You can get a bunch of capital and it's just that it's a detriment to you. hundred um, percent. Brian question, feedback. Yeah, I was just, I had a question. Maybe Cheryl can um, chime in on this. Um, uh, reporting your income um, to the IRS, or I mean, actually uh, to get a loan. I'm shopping around for a refi on my house. And yep. I was told to have two years of um, income reported. And I was assuming that was the 1099 that the IRS gets. And I, you know, I'm still young at this. So I'm, um, on paper losing money because of all my deductions. So yep. is that yep. not what I'm reporting to the institutions? No, it's not. Otherwise, everyone would have, would be able to leverage a lot of money. It's the net. It, you, you, you report like what? So if you have eBay gives you a $500,000 1099 because you did 500,000 gross. You do not get to borrow against that 500,000. You're essentially what you're doing is whatever's left after the 500,000 counts as your income. So if you have zero left or you're negative, you, you can't finance the steam off a hot dog. That's oh, okay. what they say in the car business because that's, that's no. Here, I thought I had this great hack because all my. That's right. <laughs> um, but you can finance the hot dog now. Financing as low as $10 now. I've seen in many, many places. So. In, in other places in the country, $10 buys more than one just hot dog, though. Jeff? I saw the uh, an ad pop or a news story pop up that credit cards are going to be in trouble because of all these uh, buy now, pay later companies. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know how buy now, pay later companies collect. Do they have the same rights as credit card companies? I feel like they can't chase you. Uh, I think you got to link a bank account to it, don't you? Oh, yes, and they have my phone number. They sent me a text. Remember I told you I got the buy now, pay later for the, uh, I tested it out after we were talking about it. But they sent me a text uh, saying, hey, we're about to take uh, $10.69 out of your account, okay? Mm. <laughs> they took it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I am. Um... I don't even know how they got my number, but they had it. Okay. I must, yeah. It must have been connected to something, but yeah. So Cheryl is saying that's why you may not want to take all your own deductions. You definitely, once you learn how reselling works, the next step is tax planning because it'll be your biggest bill once you figure it all out. Um, Michelle prefers debt-free living. Yeah, I would say that this will be the final thought. Living way below your means is something that you can't, you cannot gift anybody something bigger than that. If you make $10,000 a month, but your bills are only $3,000 a month, you cannot, that's like the greatest gift in history. Whatever, because if you're make 10,000, but your bills are 10,000, you will be very, very, very stressed out. So somehow have really, really, really low overhead. That's probably the secret to being really happy because you have, basically your full mental capacity to work on whatever you want to work on. So everyone in the, I mean, I'm sure people in the chat, some people have debt, some people don't make enough money that will totally consume your whole life. So it just has to be, I don't know, try not to upgrade your lifestyle, which is really easy to do. Once you start making money reselling, it's like, okay, new car, I'm going to get a bigger place. Um, I need better clothes. I need the new Yeezys upgrade my car. Now you're in a worse position than before you started reselling, especially if you start reselling and you get lucky. If you go to the store and you find something that you pay $200 for and you sell for a thousand, now you think you're like, you've, you've discovered the meaning of life, but that's not true because most stuff is not, is not like that over time. So under a million dollars, you don't need to borrow money. Really, you don't uh, need to. I, I repeat it to my kids all the time. Like, uh, economics 101, you have unlimited desires and you have limited income. 
even Michael Jackson went broke buying nine million dollar Fabergé eggs. So that's think, some about, think about that. You know, you just have to fix that and control it, or else you're going to go broke. Jeff, I mean, some companies have to have massive lines of credit, though. You know, absolutely. Because I was talking to my cousin, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what company it is, but he yeah. talks to another guy that runs a Fortune 500. Yep. And their company's line of credit is $500 million. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I have or, um, the the line of credit, like if, like Apple, they, they basically run their entire business on debt, even though they have like a trillion dollars in the bank. So they just, they just borrow when they can and they ebbs and flows. And a line of credit is really cool. I think that a $100,000 line of credit for eBay inventory is not a bad idea, but only use it for eBay inventory. There's plenty of people. My friend, Brittany, she's a really, re she's really, really good with money. She always, she only uses OPM. She has a, she has perfect credit, big savings account. She borrowed $50,000 to start her online store. She started it. It's like a snowboarding company. Um, she borrowed, she uses the line of credit to buy inventory, make store improvements, pays it back, never touches her own money, takes a paycheck out of it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just totally different. And you better be smart with your money. She doesn't, you know, the business is completely separate from her. That's the best way to do it. So she works for Brittany LLC as the company. Company pays her. The company has the debt, not her. But even though it's tied to her personal social security, it's separate. And I love that. I love the way that she does it, but that, that takes a different, different personality. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's right. JJ is saying that the limit always starts really low and goes up pretty quick. It's just like reselling. In the beginning, it's really slow, but then it picks up. It, it's You can't keep up. If you've done it for a year and you just keep rolling the money in, you will have more money than you can spend on inventory. It's impossible to, to do it. So I'm, I'm Michelle too. Team No Debt. It just really, it's, it's very different coming from like, people are addicted to the monthly payment They pay off their car, immediately buy another car and get the monthly payment again. You know, it's just part of the, makes me wonder how many people in California are all debt. Cause like, I think I make a pretty good income. I can't afford a lot of stuff, but everyone else apparently can. So when I walk around, it's really interesting. I don't. I don't know if these people really have that money because how do they, I look at how hard it is. If you, okay. If you wanted to own a home here, have two brand new cars, send your kids to private school and dress nice and go on vacations. When you write that down, it looks like you have to make $400,000 a year to actually afford that. So how many people actually make $400,000 and, or are they just making 150 and they're maxed out? Um, I think it was a Maxim article. Most of the people that are millionaires spend less than $17,000 on their necessities. Yeah, I think so. 20K. That's, why they're, that's why they're millionaires. Yeah, that's like the magic number. Spend 20K or less a year. It's or so I, think the, I think a vast majority of people in California make 400 grand a year, but that's just my opinion. It's true. A lot of people do. My brother-in-law uh -huh. is you know, my brother-in-law's net worth is around six million, and his yearly income is about four hundred thousand. Um, and he's debt-free, other than the mortgage on the house, which he just refied into a fifteen-year. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I have the same situation with my sister, but their property tax in Palos Verdes is crazy. They pay like, I think, thirty or forty thousand dollars a year because of the value of the home. It definitely make makes sense to live somewhere else. I'll have to figure it out. I mean, it would be cheaper for me to live next to tech and fly private home than to live here. <laughs> so it's interesting thinking about, 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 you know, visiting grandma by just flying here. That's, that's the main thing. Nevada's not that far too. That's true. I could do that. But yeah, under 20, if you make under $20,000 a year and you, I'm sorry, you spend under 20 and you make 71, that's like the millionaire next door. Millionaire next door, they usually, because the millionaire next door is about people who are like 50 years old and a millionaire, not young people. If you want to be a young millionaire, 
you got to make more than 71k that you have to have high income and low expenses like beat, beat the bush he retired at 30 years old it's because he made 150 grand and spent twelve thousand dollars a year spent nothing hardly anything <clears throat> and when i hung out with him we ate out twice i'm like bro is that like half of year of spending of eating out that you just wasted hanging out with me in one day and he's like no the reason that i'm so frugal so i can eat out twice with you so you know you can retire really early by having a really really high income and no bills that's like the people who live in their um, trailers in front of their in front of their job lots of people do that here they buy a, a sprinter and they just live in front of where they work they have the California income, but no California um, housing cost. Uh, but yeah, funny story. Um, <laughs> at my former employer, they would give you fifty thousand dollars towards a house to live near USC to encourage yeah. people to, as they call it, uh, gentrify the neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> he's trying to do that. But I have uh, employees that would purchase those houses, and then they would just split them up into little units or build on them to rent to the students throughout the year. And they live like in the attic portion, like the smallest room ever, you'd think. It's crazy. LA housing is just crazy. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. Um, just a reminder for everybody who's listening in YouTube land, this call is 24 hours a day, but I'm in here um, Monday through Friday in the morning. And we also have about 100 hours a week of, co I'm sorry, 100 hours a month of other coaching and other things like the accounting call with Cheryl, which is tomorrow. So for those of you joining, join the Facebook group. And then it's the same Zoom call for Cheryl's call on Thursdays. Cheryl, what time is it tomorrow? One Eastern. One Eastern. So one Eastern tomorrow for accounting. Everyone have a lovely day. I might hop on the 24 hour later, do some listing.